welcome to Hitchwood. Hitchwood is a nice rural area between Hitchin, Stevenage and the village of Codicott. And the wood itself is behind me. Lots of people come here for dog walks and uh, forest school expeditions from schools. So it's a nice centre. And very, very close to Hitchwood, there is an old chalk pit, over 100 years old. And this is called Hill End Chalk Pit. When you get to the car park here, there is a nice orientation board telling you about where the pit is and a little bit about it. And what we're going to do now is walk from the car park up to the chalk pit itself. So welcome to Hill End Chalk Pit. The pit itself has probably been here for well over a hundred years. It was used as a chalk pit for agricultural lime um, through until probably around the First World War and into the 1920s. It was at that stage that a local school teacher, a geography teacher from Hitchin Boys School called Stanley Billinghurst, started visiting the site and fossil collecting in here. Billinghurst put together quite a collection of ammonites and other fossil material and this was all written up and published in 1927. It included a number of new species, things like Subprionocyclus uh, hitchinensis and Subprionocyclus uh, cristatus were named by Billinghurst from this site. So it started to gather a certain amount of kudos as being somewhere where important fossils were found. Some of the ammonites are actually the uncoiled forms like Hyphantosaurus russianum. So there are important and unusual ammonites that come out of this site. After the Second World War and we get into the 1950s, three local Hertfordshire boys who went to the nearby grammar school in Hartford itself started to cycle um, up to the site on a regular basis. The three of them, Jack Doyle, Chris Wood and Richard Bromley, all went on to quite famous roles within geology and paleontology. Jack taught A-level geology at uh, a local sixth form college. Chris Wood went on to become the senior paleontologist, particularly working on chalk fossils for the geological survey. And Richard Bromley ended up as curator of the Natural History Museum in Copenhagen. So they all followed through the geology of their career. They visited here from 1954 onwards and Richard Bromley eventually ended up doing a PhD looking at the formation of hard grounds in chalk and burrowing organisms in chalk and looking at the development of the chalk rock surface along the whole of the Chilterns. He published a lot of this in 1981 with Andy Gale. So this information is available and is well worth looking at. The importance of this site um, increased because he named the hard ground surface that we find here the Hitchwood Hard Ground. And this is one of the, the final hard ground surfaces developed within the chalk rock complex. So it's important that we know that it's here. And it's on that Hitchwood hard ground that the fossils, the fauna that Billinghurst originally recorded in the 1920s was found. So it's been an important site through the whole of that time. During the 1970s, Jack Doyle kept the site open, bringing six formers up here, digging the site out and working in it. And through the 1980s, it remained an open, important paleontological site. But during the 1990s and into the 2000s, it started to get overgrown. It was not being particularly well looked after. And a struggle went on between the local geological society and the wildlife trust that had the management of the site. And effectively, nothing was done. And it was not until 2018 that the management of the site was handed over back from the Wildlife Trust to the local district council. 
It was not the sort of thing that the District Sound Council could look after themselves. Though, so they approached the Countryside Management Service in the Hertfordshire County Council, who in turn directly approached Hertfordshire Geological Society and asked if we wanted to do something with the site. We were overjoyed. We've been trying to do something with the site for the last 12 years. So this was our opportunity. So with the help of the Countryside Management Service, plus financial source of money from the um, Curry Fund at the Geologists Association, in the early part of 2019, an excavator was brought onto the site. So with the help of the Countryside Management Service and the Curry Fund, the site has now been reopened and it's welcome in to anybody who wants to bring a field party here. Local school children already come up and fossil hunt on the um, mound of chalk spoil that we put to one side exactly for that purpose. So let's go down to the pit itself and just have a look at the chalk. So this is the actual chalk pit itself. We have the chalk face behind us and the surface that I'm standing on. Now, about 90 million years ago, this would have been a sea floor. This was effectively the um, sea floor around about the Turonian Coniacian boundary. And this is the level and where my feet are, where Stanley Billinghurst picked up his ammonites and numerous fossils have been recorded since. In fact, in the 1960s, um, Robert Reed, working on sponges from the chalk, named a completely new genus of sponges, Hillendia, from material that had been recorded from this site. So it has important ammonite, it has important sponges, and the index fossil for the late Turonian Sternotaxus planar was recorded from this site, so we know what age it is. So the chalk rock itself lives up to its name and rings quite nicely. That is below the level of the Hitchwood hard ground, which is in fact at the base of the chalk face behind me. And that represents a period of low sea levels when these hard grounds were being formed and were exposed at the sea floor. It was followed by a rise in sea level and the normal chalk that came in during the Coney 18 stage is what was deposited behind us. So we get both stages represented, the Turonian below my feet and the Coney 18 stage behind me in the face. Fossils have come out of both levels and whatever was dug out of here and it hasn't been used has now been piled onto a spoil heap um, by the side of the pit and it becomes a, a resource for local school children and any visiting parties who want to come and see if they can record any of the material that Stanley Billinghurst found back in the 1920s. So 100 years of history sitting on top of 90 million years of geological history. It's a really nice site.